Hey, welcome back to another episode of What Elon Said. Today is March 30th, 2022. We're back here with Mark and Kevin. Hey there. Today, we're going to go over a number of uh, interesting tweets from Elon. Always fascinating. To kick it off, we have a a tweet from James Pathakokis. I totally butchered his name, I'm sure. But uh, he, um, he had an interesting comment about uh, there's been uh, there was an interview yesterday on I think CNBC uh, with uh, Elizabeth Warren, and she uh, mm. was asked about the wealth tax that President Biden's proposing, and the question was whether you know the we should celebrate these innovators and that not punish them for um, earning all this income and that they're already paying quite a bit. Elon paid 11 billion last year, I think the most ever of any one individual. Elizabeth Warren pushed back, saying that the government. Uh, uh, was their partner without the government, they would not have been able to be the business they are. So they should pay back their respective costs. There's been a lot of uh, discussion online saying it was a loan and they paid it back early with interest. So it's not like they didn't pay back the government for what they were given. They didn't take money and just start the company and keep it. So that was a big point. And over here, what this person's saying is that um, theoretically, if there was a wealth tax um, on unearned, unrealized gains when Elon sold PayPal, he would have had 60 million less. And uh, as a result of that, he would not have been able to start uh, to keep both Tesla and SpaceX afloat at their crisis point in 2008. Yeah. Um, so if uh, there was a wealth tax, they wouldn't have existed. And Elon agreed that this is a good point that SpaceX and Tesla would probably have died since both narrowly escaped bankruptcy in 2008. Just one comment I have before I send it to you, Kevin, is they show a picture of, um, of Toy Story. Uh, what's the name of it? Pixar Toy Story, which, you know, was founded basically by Steve Jobs yeah. by funding Pixar when their moment of crisis. And if there was a wealth tax, he probably wouldn't have been able to do that either. So that's another mm. company that wouldn't have happened. We would not have been able to enjoy Toy Story if it were not if it was for a wealth tax. <laughs> yeah, interesting. I didn't catch that reference there. Um, but yeah, good point. But uh, yeah, Elon's made this point numerous times before, right? That Tesla and SpaceX both almost died out of bankruptcy, and I I'm just having trouble wrapping my r- head around how an unrealized tax gain on equities or other assets how you achieve that or how you measure that Uh, and like you know what if you like you get taxed on your gains and then the next year the stock is way down and then you've you know you've been taxed on something that you didn't even utilize Uh, i'm unsure i mean i I guess I just need to educate myself more on the argument for it, but it seems like it'd be a very complicated operation to um, withhold and and like to measure. Yeah, I I think everyone's having their head, having difficulty wrapping their head around it. Um, Actually, Elizabeth Warren was asked in an interview how they would actually track this with any thousands of new employees. She walked around the issue, really, in my opinion. She didn't really answer directly. I think it's pretty much impossible. The other question is, what if you have an unli- unrealized loss? Yeah. <laughs> Do you exactly. get uh, money back? Or can you deduct a loss uh, from your real, real taxes? That's like literally creates a new loophole, in my opinion. Right. Um, that have huge unrealized losses that are fake and then pay no taxes because of that. <laughs> yeah. And then... Uh, the other thing, uh, there was one other thing with it that I, I forgot. Oh, yes, it's probably unconstitutional. So it would have to go through a, a court to actually get approved. And a, an unrealized gain is uh, theoretically unconstitutional. So I don't know if it would ever really happen. It's kind of a crazy idea to execute. I don't know how they would. And many companies would not, uh, innovative companies probably would not occur because of it. Yeah. So, uh, it's a, I don't think it's too it popular. It feels to me like a anything that's a tax the rich 
argument feels very um, guttural and emotional uh, from whoever's arguing it, usually. And particularly when it's a politician, it seems like it's an effort to gain eyes and votes and uh, opinions. Yeah, but it's crazy. I guess just it, raise the tax rate. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, not not to say that I would not have done this before, but I feel like tracking Elon and what Elon says and trying to understand the way his mind works uh, pushes you to rationalize through discussions like this as opposed to going with your guttural emotional like first instinct you know i i'm sure that most people do have an aversion to uh the division of wealth and and extremely wealthy people um but getting to understand a little bit more uh what elon has done and what his wealth is made up of um has pushed me a little bit to to dig further into that argument and get past that initial reaction. Yep. I agree. And uh, it, you start to realize what happens really where that money's being spent or how, and uh, it's yeah. that type the unrealized gains is not wasteful. So it's uh, not gluttonous. They're not buying another yacht with Correct. an unrealized gain. <laughs> That's what yes. it's more about is uh, <laughs> the utilization of this wealth. That's right. That's right, which is different than uh, a tax on your income. So that if they want to tax the rich, in a sense, they can tax their gains, um, if uh, because that is that they can spend freely on whatever they want. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so well, that's I'm another sure that interesting that, comment. That conversation is never going away. So never yeah. going away. We'll see more. So, of that uh, yes, as we move forward. Um, all right, so I'll take this one. Sawyer Merritt posted news, always a good follow for breaking news, especially regarding Tesla, um, that there's a Detroit, let me see, official, former official at a Detroit branch of the UAW uh, pleaded guilty for embezzling $2 million in union dollars. And he's the 17th defendant convicted in an ongoing UAW criminal investigation. This just keeps getting wilder and wilder um, union corruption. But Elon responded with a UAW, his version of the UAW slogan, which is fighting for the right to embezzle money from auto workers and (laughs) saying that the UAW stole millions from workers, whereas Tesla has made many workers millionaires via stock grants. Subtle but important difference. (laughs) Yes, it, uh, not so it subtle, is. but um, yeah. not so subtle. Uh, he really he is presenting a little black and white of uh, worst case of the UAW. Definitely, yeah. investment is very bad, but uh, the UAW does a lot of good things for ensuring company, you know, pensions and that comp- the the line workers and most of the workers get uh, the benefits they need. Not all of them are going to become millionaires, uh, depending on when they join the company. Mm. So the the more re- most I would say most Tesla employees are more recent than longtime Tesla employees. So they're not going to become millionaires from the stock. <laughs> um, maybe. You maybe. But, Especially uh, uh, if there's a stock split and it, they get you never a know. Of it and they have you never know. an option for uh, and discounted purchasing then and it absolutely. goes up. But who knows, 2040, maybe many more millionaires. Maybe. Uh, it would be interesting to see what, uh, if I wish Elon would post more I understand the stock argument. It's great, but I wish sometimes he would post that their benefits, what their benefits are, and it's just as good as the UAW, mm-hmm. and that they have a pension, that they have, um, you know, what's their medical, just that I never hear what that is from Tesla. I'm sure it's good, but I, it would yeah. be nice to hear rather than just what stock, uh, potential stock growth there might be. Well, I think this is a engineering viewpoint of Elon. Um, projected onto like a real world business situation where he's saying that almost like the best part is no part the best yeah. process is no process so yes why do we need a union if we just do the right thing by the people who work for us so that is true let's just eliminate that extra step and just do yeah. the right thing to begin with um, that's right it seems like he advocates that and if you're the ceo of an organization that trickles down not always, yep. but for the most part, if that's your your message, 
Yes. Uh, and I'm sure know, they pay right. well, you know, and the corruption is awful. Like the millions are stolen. That's just not good. Yeah. <laughs> um, the good thing is they were caught and the government's doing their job what they should to investigate. But uh, the it's uh, I, I like his argument. I believe what he's saying here. I just yeah. wish he'd added to it. Yeah. I mean, always good to have a little bit more information. Yeah. I just know my experience with unions at the organization I worked for was always very tense. And whether whichever side of the fence you were on, there was a lot of file and vitriol spewed, like just a lot of mean stuff. Like yeah, it creates a pressure, negative environment and pressure. That's, and I, I just always had a very uneasy feeling with the organization or with, with, the, with the group, the union group. Yeah, I hear you. Good point. Well, uh, um, speaking of more legal uh, interactions, um, here's one from Tesla Roddy about, um, you know, e- Elon is being, uh, uh, I'd say, sued or not like investigated, I should say, by the SEC for his... Uh, uh, trades, um, whether they're illegal, um, most likely not, but he sees, he feels like he's being singled out. And also they've uh, attacked him for what he's tweeted by tweeting information that is not supposed to be publicly available in the past. Yeah. Um, and in his response to uh, the SEC recently, he quoted uh, Eminem. <laughs> so he's comparing his situation to Eminem where he, Eminem was uh his music wasn't allowed on the radio because the FCC, another organization, found it uh, vulgar. So he, Eminem, was fighting back at that time. And Elon is comparing his plight to uh, Eminem's in a way. It's really a free speech argument. Um, so Elon's had a theme along this for uh, quite a bit in the last couple of months. I probably always, but much more recently. And yeah. sounds like uh, he has valid points and he's just uh, fighting. But he made a little joke of it here saying, that um, I mean, we're basically identical, meaning with M- Eminem, <laughs> a few differences, maybe. <laughs> uh, I do love that, that bringing a little humor into it. Um, That's right. But you're right. I mean, he so my understanding of the SEC case is that they, they basically want to muzzle him and uh, monitor his tweeting behavior, essentially, like what it comes down yes. to. Right? I don't know about yes. trading and, and all that, but. It's like his infringing on his own freedom of speech, which we know right. he's got a major issue with. And he also thinks that uh, Twitter should just be like a public town square forum. You know, anything goes, basically. Yeah, no, whether it's vile or positive, everything should be out there and then vetted and counter vetted for what it is. Yeah. That's right. Without bots. <laughs> Correct. Um, so yes. yeah, interesting take here from him. I I yes. would like to see the email. I don't know how how he quotes them. <laughs> I don't. Know. Well, he did. He put or a line in from it. his song or something. I, yeah, it was it wasn't as clear, but interesting. Good comment. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this one is from Harsimran. Har, Har Why did I even try that, Mark? I don't yeah, know. from this guy. Jeez, man. Yes. You can see the screen. Uh, just noting that supercharging has gotten very expensive in the last few weeks. It's similar to filling up with gas at this point. Any idea why it's so expensive all of a sudden? Um, so this this just triggers all sorts of uh, curious thoughts from my mind as to um, what what energy is supplying the superchargers. Know, it how yeah how sustainable is that energy i would imagine that it's like renewable energy that they're using there but no maybe not maybe it's just more efficient um you know cold power the regular there. yeah i think it's the electric electrical lines that go to the block like whatever yeah. is over there i don't think they, they're building maybe they have a solar uh unit on a charger they could have but for the most part it's just plugged into the grid i would think right and then how is the pricing how does the pricing of solar and wind work? Um, but uh, I guess Elon I know. doesn't know all the answers either. So he said, we'll find out. Our aspiration is just to make a modest return versus the uh, fully considered price of supercharging. 
Canada requires charging by the minute versus kilowatt hour. So we're working to get that changed. So, so yeah, that was his follow follow up. I think he investigated it. So it was three hours after the first tweet yeah. response. So it seems like maybe the issue was the way Canada charges it. Now that it's brand new in Canada, you know that they they went up there for mm. uh, full self driving. Okay. Maybe he's becoming aware of it for the first time. Oh well, um, yeah. Now I see that this is this is in. Uh, I guess that's this Ontario, right? Yep, correct. Okay. Canadian dollars. Yep. And uh, so, but yes, that's a good question of how it, the energy is. Uh, what the f- hear about that? Let's look into that. And also, it is interesting to see that they have a modest charge we're trying to do when fully considered price of, I guess, fully considered price is the full cost. Yeah. Not just price, but interesting. So a little uh, tidbit on how supercharging is priced. Mm-hmm. Very, very nice to see. Yeah. And nice follow-up from Elon, too. Oh, yeah. Um, here we have uh, just some good news. Climate change, wind and solar reach milestone. So I think uh, wind and solar were 10% of world's uh, world energy last year. That's quite a milestone. Um, Elon said sustainable energy sustainable energy generation from sun and wind are making great progress. Um, so 10% is enormous in the amount of time that it's really ramped up and exponentially um, from some reports we've looked at, which we can link to that a hundred percent of world's energy needs should be from wind and solar, just actually just even solar within the next 10 to 15 years if it's on track for its economies of scale, plus the technical innovation that's there. Uh, so using rights law, um, it's been mapped out. It's sort of, uh, you know, once something is mapped out and digitized and energy is digitized for the first time ever now, it just takes off. So it is a, a problem that's going to be solved for the world. You know, arguments against that they collapse, dust, wind, Towers are hard to repair. These are all true, but the rate of innovation in it is fascinating. Mm-hmm. And sorry, I'm going on with this. One other point with uh, energy is that the article said that last year, even 10% was in a year where coal and other energy sources increased as well. So it's not like we're uh, using less energy or the same plateau. It's 10% of an increased world usage actually we use a full india's worth of energy increase last year mm. so it's that uh, sounds everything. a little bit more negative to me <laughs> well um, that part is negative get, but it's but the gains of of renewables yeah. is really catching up yeah. um and That's this good. last I year mean, it, this, it just needs a, that scale even though the entire scale is getting bigger the percentage of renewables needs to grow in comparison to non-renewable. That's right. And uh, it did say on the negative that the next couple of years, there's a setback because of uh, Russia and Ukraine being taken off line in the sense that renewable prices are going to skyrocket. So it will deter uh, implementation. So we might see a reduction in the percentage for a few years, but then I'll come right back. I mean, it seems because like the cost this... of uh, all the metals are uh, increasing. Okay, that are sourced from those countries. Yeah, they're, they're the main suppliers of most of those metals. But I mean, isn't fossil fuel sourced from those countries too? So it like... is. Those are going to skyrocket too. But Jeez. to build, those will just be used no matter what. That's easy. But to build a new solar array, uh, it will be uh, cost prohibitive to mm. actually build it. Yeah. Wow, you're you're giving like you're giving like positive news building <laughs> building me up here and then just like yeah a but but one more thing pull the rug out from under me. Like, <laughs> well a little bump like, in the road, uh, but it'll yeah. come back after that. But you know That's what right. I love is that Elon has that mentality. Like, look, it's a bump in the road. We're on the right track. We need to keep pushing, can't take our foot off the gas, but like we're going to get there and it's not all doom and gloom. Yeah. However, this right. is also where I, I start to think to myself, okay, it's not all doom and gloom on the climate change front, but there's this other, like that's a slow moving problem that we're addressing 
quickly. And there's this really fast moving problem that we're addressing very slowly or no one's addressing, which is AI. And like, yes, I, I mean, I'm ultimately optimistic about that too, but it's a little bit more concerning to me that it's just so fast moving um, that it'll get out of hand. Uh, yes, it is very, very scary that the difference and between I, I think uh, he shares that intelligence and well. super intelligence. What's that? I think he shares I, that opinion as well. I mean, he's commented oh. that, that that's the greatest threat. Yeah, he says this, his two greatest threats that he's been saying lately is AI. He's been a consistent theme and uh, uh, population collapse. Yep. yep. All right, on that positive oh, note. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yes. that, one, that one was yes. an emotional roller coaster right there. Yes. Um, all right. Well, I, let me take this one because I'm excited here, um, especially yeah. uh, since I commented about FSD with left hand drive uh, countries, and I was, I was hopeful about it on, on another tweet thread. But uh, we got Tesla Owners UK here saying, hopefully not long until we get it here in the UK, referring to FSD beta, which was expanding in Canada. And Elon said, FSD beta should be available in Europe for left-hand drive this summer and right-hand drive a few months later. These dates depend on regulatory approval, which of course we shouldn't be too optimistic about, uh, given that it's Europe. But I'm, I was... I'm very curious to know how easy or difficult the switch is to flip FSD, like basically mirror it for yeah. left-hand drive countries. That is there's not a good that question. Yeah. That I wonder if how, how mirrored it is. I'm sure it is very, because it is the same thing and just reverse. I can't imagine it would be much different. Yeah. Um, we'll find out. Well, I, I, uh, Dave Lee was interviewing James Dauma, and I'll just give myself away here, but I tweeted to him that uh, I'm very curious to know if it would ever be able to be implemented in some of these more rural areas of Europe where there's very old roads with very tight like walls and there's a lot yeah. of human eye-to-eye -eye interaction and like subtle yeah. agreements between drivers that occur to drive decision making about you know who's got the right of way or whose turn it is to go or whatever um and i just don't yeah. see how that plays out with fsd of course i i don't have nearly a, a good enough understanding of it but um i'm i'm very curious and that's why i asked you know the pros like that's James and interesting Dave, so that we'll see hopefully that, that, that came up in their conversation i have yeah it would be good to know that's just something that you never think of that eye to eye kind of like the uh, unspoken acknowledgement yeah. of who has the right of way. Exactly. It's when, or the when you the really glare. reflect as you're driving and you, you pay attention to every little nuance of yeah. what your eyes are doing, your limbs and your brain, um, and even the interactions with other people, I, that's when you realize geez, this is a very difficult problem to work through. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll get there. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, so here, I think I think this is the last one for today. We have uh, just something to look forward to. We have a post from uh, jo Jonna, Jonah Kreider. Jonna? Uh, we talked Jonna? about this, Mark. Jonna? <laughs> uh, I would. So um, they asked to interview. She uh, he she <laughs> asked to interview for Clean Technica. Yeah. And Elon. And saying that we will not twist your words like the Washington Post did, they supposedly misquoted him. And Elon uh, just said, "Okay, sure." So he agreed to that interview. We'll see uh, when that happens. I know he's agreed to some others that haven't happened yet, but you know mm -hmm. he's a very busy schedule. But it's another interview to look forward to. So we're yeah, we're excited to see that. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, well, first of all, I'll just say I love John Kreider's uh, Twitter account. Just very positive person. Apparently, writes for Clean Technica. Um, and has just a lot of positive articles and threads about Elon and just, just a good person, it seems like to me. Um, secondly, I heard that there was an interview with Elon that was published 
uh, maybe earlier this week. Um, so mm -hmm. we got to dig that up and see what was mentioned there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And if anyone, what he said, if anyone uh, has a link to that interview, please shoot it to us in the comments. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. All right. So that's it for today. That pretty much sums up what Elon said uh, for the last day. So we will wrap it up there. And if you like this video, please give it a like and uh, consider subscribing. Bye. <laughs>